Johnny Bones Jones. Born in 1987, he was raised by two loving and supportive parents, a family that valued hard work and athleticism. His siblings would make it into the NFL. Jones, being a bit of a slacker, he would settle to become merely one of the greatest fighters we've ever seen. Someone in a comment section once said it best. If aliens came to invade Earth, the first thing I'd send to defend us would be John Jones. You know, me personally, I'll probably choose like a nuke or something, but John Jones would be a close second. John wrestled in high school, proving himself to be extremely talented and becoming a state champion in New York. Around 2008 is when he began training MMA. The sport was just past its infancy stage, where real stars and champions had begun emerging. Jones would find himself in the famous Jackson's MMA coma. The people he met in this gym would be the masterminds that shaped his career. This and the Jackson Link MMA Academy were the perfect places to nurture Jones's crazy talent and eye for the sport. Just three months after his first pro fight, he would be 6-0 and he would be making his UFC debut. With the combination of his freakish talent, attributes, and athleticism, he would plow through the light heavyweight division like me with your mom. Something which appeared almost destined to happen, Jones would reach the pinnacle of the sport by destroying Shogun. Coming from a family of athletes, having insane talent, and being raised by two loving parents that instilled hard work into their children, it seemed destiny had finally run its course. At just 23, Jones was the youngest fighter to ever seize a championship belt in the UFC, a record that remains till this day. To this day! However, Things begin to take a turn from here. John would continue to carve his legacy by crushing all the top contenders, but there were whispers of John potentially not being the person he portrayed himself to be. Rampage, a pretty chill dude, was the first to sniff out some bad vibes. It's about time he grew up and started acting like a real MMA fighter and put on a front for these fans. I have zero respect for John Jones, but his head is so far up his ass, he, he thinks that he's the greatest champion of all time. With Rashad being the one to put her on blast. You know, I don't respect John as a person. I think John is fake just by even sitting here and saying that this is not going to be personal. Of course this is personal. Rashad was a former teammate and friend of Jones. He knew his true colors. Not only this, he believed John was a bit of a slacker. As the saying goes, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Unless the talent is John Jones. Where Rashad went wrong is believing that John didn't work hard. He did, but work hard and play hard is personified no better than with Johnny Boy. In a famous episode of the JRE, Jones revealed that he would get completely blackout wasted a week before all of his major fights, with the aim of creating an excuse to shield his pride and his self-image if he ever was to somehow lose. One week before every fight, I would go out and I would get blacked out wasted. <laughs> and my logic was, if this guy were to beat me somehow, I, I can look myself in the mirror and say that, well, I lost because I got hammered the week before the fight. After going through a grueling fight with Alexander Gustafsson, one that would be inducted into the Hall of Fame for its brutality, technicality, and heart shown from both fighters, John would narrowly escape with the belt around his waist. This rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. If there's one thing we love more than to see somebody make a name for themselves, it's to see them fall. Having a win that was undeserved in a lot of eyes was not exactly popularity inducing for John. Following this would come the most iconic and MMA defining rivalry we have ever seen in my opinion. Primal competition, seething hatred, literal death threats. You know I would absolutely kill you if you ever did something like that. You right? could never, you could never kill me. Oh, I, I bet you I could. This rivalry brought out the best and the worst of Cormier and Jones. With people already on edge about Jones's win over Gus, everyone and their mama pulled for Daniel to do the unthinkable. As mentioned earlier, this rivalry brought out the worst in both of these men, and the cracks in John's facade were beginning to show. Though John would walk away from the fight with a win, DC would have the last laugh. New trouble this morning for a mixed martial arts champion. UFC star John Jones turned himself into police overnight. John Bones Jones finds himself in some trouble. I kind of freaked out and I was just more upset, you know, that he couldn't at least stay in he said, I'm sorry, or something. Throughout the years, people had been challenging the character of Jones. Now, there was physical proof of the type of person he was. He was involved in a hit and run incident where he crashed his car into a pregnant lady at an intersection before running off. Uh, then running back to grab some cash just to run off again. Yikes. There's no better feeling in the world than proving doubt is wrong. To prove them right, it has to be horrendous. After having his name dragged around by fighters and fans just to prove them all right and being skeptical about his character was the ultimate gut punch to all Jones fans. He was stripped of his titles, taken to court, and sentenced to 18 months of probation. John took a year off the sport, during which DC, his most bitter rival, would capture the light heavyweight championship. Though, people had a right to be skeptical about John. This was surprisingly the time that people swung back to his side. 
Despite his mistakes, despite the known character breaks, we had already seen him fall. If there's one thing we love to see more than a champion fall, is to see them make it back to the top. John would reflect on his mistakes, guide children on the right path, and show people that he really had learned. It was time to see him reclaim the belt that he never lost. In a complete 180 from their previous fight, John would be the overwhelming crowd favorite. <laughs> <What's up? laughs> We all wanted to see him bounce back from his mistakes and show that he was the rightful heir to the throne. What made people turn on John initially was an undeserved win against Gus. After winning the belt without beating the rightful king, DC was now the undeserved champion, and it was time for him to fall. MMA brings out many shades of humanity within us. It reveals how easily swayed and fickle a lot of us can be, but there will always be a core fan base that sticks by someone's side no matter what. Is McGregor potentially an asshole and a really weird guy at times? Yeah, absolutely. Do I still root for him in every single fight? Yeah. <laughs> Team Bones was riding high, and the world awaited a triumphant return to the throne for John on the biggest stage of all, UFC 200. It was notified tonight that the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency has informed John Jones of a potential anti-doping policy violation. Yep. Jones would test positive for steroids before the fight, getting it cancelled and destroying the event. This one was tough. The fight would be rescheduled for UFC 214, an entire year after it was meant to initially happen. There was lots of doubt heading into this fight regarding whether John would make it to the fight without slipping up. Fortunately, he did make it, and in a back and forth fight that had the crowd holding their breath, Jones would land a head kick to close off the rivalry. He would go over and thank his longtime rival DC, and give an emotional speech about learning and growing from all his mistakes. He finally made it back to the top. After reclaiming the belt and a concussive and brutal finish over DC, he would pop for steroids again, overturning the fight to a no contest and giving Daniel his belt back. Disappointing. That's what this was. After slipping up so many times, it seemed John finally got his personal life together just to fuck it up again and literally kamikaze his life and DC's life. Daniel was knocked unconscious to lose the fight in the eyes of the world, while John would undo every bit of self-development in our eyes by popping for steroids yet again and tarnishing what was meant to be a heartwarming moment where he buried the hatchet with Daniel and made his way back to the top after conquering his demons. It was back to square one. Not even that, it was like square negative three bro. Connor once said in an interview that a lack of discipline is a slap in the face to everyone who believes in you. Your lack of commitment is almost an insult to the people who believe in you. And I, and I think that is the most spot on assessment of what happened here. A slap to the face to everyone who rooted for him, a punch to the gut to everyone who rooted for Daniel, and a knockout blow for his reputation. After being suspended for another year, he would return once more in 2018 in a rematch against Gustafsson. Was anyone on earth rooting for John at this point? It's sad because we can all kind of empathize with letting people down, despite our best efforts. Pushing for change, trying to become the type of person people look up to, just to snap back into your old ways, that's heartbreaking. Perhaps John became accustomed to letting people down. He must have. There's no possible way I could fathom going through that so many times without just becoming numb to it. He would go on another run of title defenses after defeating Gus in their rematch for the belt. It was clear at this point. He was one of the best to ever do it. With many of the greats, those who redefined and transcended their sport, there's often a couple screws loose. You have your GSPs, your DJs, and your Habibs, those who achieved greatness while from what I can see, being somewhat mentally stable. But a step up from that is where I see those like John Jones, Conor McGregor, Mike Tyson, etc. Those who were completely revolutionary at the cost of maybe a few demons. For Conor, it was an insatiable hunger for more. With Tyson, it was being a crazy motherfucker. With Jones, it's difficult to decipher. Perhaps it was alcoholism, perhaps it was drug use, but I believe it was his talent. His talent, combined with his borderline unfair frame, took him so incredibly far beyond the rest that he didn't need to keep himself in check. There was no need to be disciplined and live healthy as he was going to win anyways. There was no need to learn from his mistakes as he's the greatest. There's no accountability and it's something Daniel spoke about once in a really thought-provoking piece. You learn when you have to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Mm -hmm. And I said on the countdown show before the fight, the way John Jones makes changes is by losing to me. I didn't beat him. Mm. Chael Sonnen didn't beat him. Right. So many people didn't beat him because all the bad behavior still led to success. Right. John had no reason to hold himself accountable, and no one else was going to do that, that's for damn sure. After going a solid few months, maybe years without anything serious, obviously there was him randomly firing off a few rounds for the hell of it, and drunk driving, and uh, this. Jones would find himself amidst maybe the worst scandal of his career. During his Hall of Fame induction in 2021, we would come to learn that there was an incident between John and his then fiance, 
Details are still murky, but she would leave the hotel with visible damage on her face, and the police would arrest John, not without a fight though. Finally, a shred of accountability was dealt towards him as the gym that helped shape him into the great he is would drop him. You have to stop drinking and fix these things for, for a certain period of time until you can come back to gym. John hasn't fought since 2020, with his last fight being a close split decision that he arguably lost. It's been three years and we're finally seeing his return. After so many slip ups, so many scandals, so many internal demons he fought, is now the time that he finally steps up as a heavyweight? shocks the world and proves to everyone that it's never too late to change? I'm not sure. It seems he's almost destined to fuck up again in the future. But can you ever fully count someone out? It's been one and a half years since any trouble and from all accounts he's been working hard and staying grounded. He returns this weekend against the real guy. Somebody as equally cursed with talent as he was. Jones is the GOAT that should have been THE GOAT. The millionaire that should have been a billionaire. How John will be remembered is up in the air right now. He has a tall task ahead of him and this is the most important fight for his legacy ever. Technically speaking, Garn should be a lot for John to handle. Rationally, I would probably favour Garn to win, but Jones has had to fight through so much in the octagon and in life, it's hard to ever imagine him losing. Though this is a high stakes fight, I see this more so as Jones versus himself. He's a born winner that was cursed with talent at a very young age. Has he conquered the demons that have plagued his life for so many years and solidify his legacy as the greatest? Or will accountability finally catch up to him in the form of being knocked unconscious in the octagon? I guess we'll find out. Yo, what's up guys? This is a uh, Leighton from the future, I guess. After John Jones submitted Surreal Gun in like three minutes. Holy sh- The question that I left you with was, will Jones be able to have conquered his demons or will accountability finally catch up to him? And I think we got a resounding answer um, <laughs> just now. I think it's pretty clear Maybe not entirely, maybe you can't ever get over that type of thing, but it seems like he's finally overcome his demons. Seeing that he's been gone for three years, seeing that from all accounts he's been working on himself, seeing that he's been back with his fiance after the fight, seeing all these things. Maybe Jones has finally conquered his inner demons? I'm not sure. It seems like he's at least making an attempt at it, which is great to see. I'm just so enamored with just his story everything that's gone into this and yeah he's made his fair share of mistakes in the past for sure um but can you ever discredit john jones the athlete i don't think you can he's just he's truly a once in a lifetime type of athlete he's the greatest he's the greatest there's no debate now